All right, so here's the plan for today. Uh, we had, there were questions from page 126 and 127, which was the quotient rule and the uh, product rule. And so uh, we're going to take a look at that um, right now. And then we'll have some time after that that we're going to um, do another lesson on the chain rule. And hopefully this time I'll explain that reason why it is what it is a little bit better. That caught, guys caught me off guard. So, uh, what's that? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I promise not to rewrite the same thing five times. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, page, these are all the questions that you had uh, for me to do, so we're going to run through them quickly. Uh, is that my phone? Yeah. I'm way too far away from it, the swivel <laughs> won't follow, and so that, it is what it is. Yeah. I hear nothing. All right, you guys are more important. Uh, by the way, chain rule assignment, page 137, is due on Wednesday. Okay? So. Okay, let's roll. Uh, when I was going through this, it, it seemed like most of them were on quotient rule. So uh, let's, let's go do this. So number 12, we're supposed to find the derivative of the cosine of t over t cubed. So here we go. This is then equal to... We got to... Don't back into the abacus. So, someday I'll show you how to use this. Okay. Isn't it supposed to like stay? I always, I, I have that here for the sole purpose of when a student says, can I borrow a calculator? <laughs> Look over here, sure. <laughs> Did you actually tell me that? <laughs> What's that? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. It's insane. I know. No. <laughs> Watch it outside of class. <laughs> All right, here we go. So I, I uh, have a, a, a mental thing about how I go about doing this. So I know what the rule is, but I say it with using the bottom and the top. Top function and bottom function. So, however, whatever it takes for you to learn it, do it. So, here it is. It's the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. Notice it's not the derivative of the bottom squared. Okay, so whatever it takes for you to know this, you have to know it on the exam without any kind of cheat sheet. So that's critical that the first step is there. And then the rest is just kind of clean up. So 3t squared, 3t, uh, pardon me, t cubed, what am I doing here? Minus t cubed sine of t minus 3t squared cosine of t and over t to the sixth. <coughs> Bless you. Now, it's quite possible that you looked in the back of the book and, bless you, that this answer did not match. Okay? What's that? It didn't give you the answer. Oh, it didn't give you the answer. Okay, so, so that's how you go about it. But do you see that there's a t to the third here, t squared here, and t to the sixth here? So you can actually factor out a t squared, okay, t squared, and then cancel it with the t to the sixth. And if you do that, we'll write a final answer here. Um, I won't write the inner step, but you're going to factor out a t squared out of both. It's going to give you minus t times the sine of t minus 3 cosine of t all over t to the fourth. Did I do that right? Okay, so on the AP exam, it's very likely that they would put this as one of the options on the multiple choice, 
not the other ones. So you got to be aware of your algebra as well as the calculus. Okay? Factor and cancel. Factor and cancel. All right, number 23 is actually easier than you think, but you may have not thought of it this way. This does not have, you don't have to do quotient rule on this one. Look at, it's x to the 3 halves on the top, it's x to the first on the bottom. So this is the same as x, 4x to the 1 half. It's 3 halves minus 1. Okay, so it just starts off like that. Then you take the derivative of it, y prime is equal to 4 times a half times x to the negative 1 half. And that gives you 2, that's x to the negative 1 half, so I can write it as x to the 1 half in the denominator, which is the square root of x. Okay, so just watch, it's, it's, this is what happens when you do enough of them, all of a sudden you can spot something faster than you normally could. All right, in this one it's different because we're going to find the actual slope of the function when x is equal to pi over 6. So we've got to find the derivative and then plug in the pi over 6. So here we go. So f prime, quotient rule here, bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over bottom squared. So that's the calculus part of it. Now it's just plugging it in. Notice my notation, f prime of 6 is pi over 6 times the cosine of pi over 6 minus the sine of pi over 6 all over pi over 6 squared. Find the derivative, plug in the x value. Then just kind of clean it up. So what happens here? Uh, I see pi over 6, cosine of pi over 6 is the square root of 3 over 2 minus sine of pi over 6, 1 half, all over, notice what I'm doing here, pi squared over 36, okay? And then uh, what do we got here? This is a little messy, um, so let's keep on going here. This is pi times the square root of 3 over 6 minus 1 half over the pi squared over 36. What I'd probably do here is multiply top and bottom by 36. Okay, the whole top and the whole bottom. You then eliminate the, the additional fraction. So now I'm going to distribute the 36 to both of these. Oh, this is, see, that's the whole, and who said something? You did? Okay, good job. All right, now I'm going to distribute. So the 36 cancels with the 12 to make a 3, so it's 3 pi times the square root of 3. It's not over anything anymore. Minus... 36 times a half is 18 over pi squared. Okay? Or some thing equivalent to it. Okay. All right, number 45, find me the derivative of this. So this is t to the one fourth. Everybody say hi to Amanda. Hi. So this is t to the one fourth. So it's one fourth t to the one fourth minus. I don't like to make mistakes on this. So. Uh, Sometimes it gets a little goofy with those uh, fractional exponents. So it's 1 fourth minus 1. Plus 8, what's the derivative of the secant? Do 
Did we ever do that one? Oh, then we don't have to do it. It's in your book. Yeah. It's, what is it? Secant times tangent. So it's secant of t times tangent of t. But we know that if you came across the problem like that on the test, and it was something you'd never seen before, you'd be expected and be able to figure it out. Okay, so this is a side note here. What if you had to find the derivative of the secant? What would you do? So the derivative of the secant of x of t is equal to the derivative of 1 over the cosine of t. And then you would apply the quotient rule. And if you worked it all the way down, do, 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 you would end up with the secant times the tangent. Okay? We won't do it here. You, that's the fun you'll get to do on your own. Because that's the kind of teacher I am. Okay, so, and then that's, just finish that off. So this is 1 fourth times t to the negative 3 fourths plus the 8 secant t times tangent of t. And then, uh, note, make sure you see this. This is 1 over 4 times t to the 3 fourths plus blah, blah, blah. And we get our answer. And then put this into a good form if it's necessary. A lot of times on the AP test, they leave it as a fractional exponent. But you should make sure that you see that this section right here, it's really the fourth root of t cubed. Okay, so that part right there could be written like this, and this will be right. It goes, the power is on the top, the root's on the bottom. Oh, the four would go, so that whole thing would look like that. Okay, and 73, find all the x-coordinates where f is a horizontal tangent line. And there's the function. Okay, big picture. How do we find where a function, or any random function, where does it have a horizontal tangent line? This is a common question. When the derivative is equal to 0. Okay, so we find the derivative and set it equal to 0 and then solve. So here we go. f prime of x is equal to... Uh, bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over bottom squared. We'll do a little cleanup. This is equal to, uh, I'm going to just distribute here, 2x squared minus 2x minus x squared all over x minus 1 squared. All I did was distribute the 2x and there we go. So this is the key. Set the derivative equal to 0 and then solve. Okay. Now, a funny thing about fractions is that they're only equal to 0 if the numerator is equal to 0. That's it. So, and you can prove it by, if you think of this as a, as a proportion. How you doing, Jamie? Give a tissue. Give a tissue. Yeah, way in the corner, under the ACDC poster. So if you cross multiply here, it wipes out, it wipes out the x minus 1 squared. So what comes down is it's 0 is equal to, and then if you don't mind, I'm going to clean up this numerator. 2x squared minus x squared is just x squared minus 2x. So using algebra, I went from here to here. Cross multiply, got rid of the thing on the bottom, and then just clean up the numerator. This is the numerator, like that. So all you have to do is find out where is this is true. Well, the power in factoring is pull out the x. It now gives you a zero product pr property that we can work with. And so the two places are x equals zero and x equals two. 
if you were to graph this function, it would have horizontal tangents at 0 and 2. And that is really funny. <laughs> Did I go through? Is that okay? Okay. So in general, find the derivative, set it equal to zero, and solve for x. <laughs> okay, here we go. Moving on. So find the second derivative of this thing. So, okay, that means we got to find the first derivative. And then when we're done, we're going to find the derivative of that derivative. So 4 times 3 halves, 4 times 3 halves times x to the 1 half, right? And what does this become? This becomes 6x to the 1 half. 6x to the 1 half. Okay, then the second derivative is the derivative of the first derivative. So it's 6 times 1 half times x to the 1 half minus 1, which is 3x to the negative 1 half, which is 3 over the square root of x. You'd have to do enough of them to be able to spot a pattern if there is one. Okay. She wanted to know if there was an easy way to just go from the function to the, like a second or third derivative. And I told her only if you spot a pattern and you make your rule. Otherwise, you've got to crank it out. Okay, 106. I gave you a bunch of these because this kind of problem is on the AP exam where they give you these values. They give you the functional value and then the derivative. So they're giving you the point and the slope, the point and the slope for the two different functions. And then they say, OK, find me f prime of 2 if f of x is equal to 4 minus h of x. So you say to yourself, OK, well, I don't know what the functions actually look like. But what I can do is I know that the derivative of f, this is important to see, is equal to 0 minus the derivative of h. Look at that carefully. If this is my function, then this is the derivative of my function. Okay? If this is h, its derivative is h prime. It's just part of it. So that means that if I want to find f prime of 2, then wherever I had an x, I plug in a 2. So this is 0 minus this, so it's going to be negative h prime of 2. Because I plugged in the 2 here, so that means I plug in the 2 here. Well, this is the opposite of h prime of 2. h prime of 2, we were told, is a 4, so it's minus Make sure you, there's a bunch of problems that I gave you that were around there. So make sure you do those and you get you get to understand those correctly. Okay, how do, 130 and 132 are almost like philosophical questions. Okay, they're theoretical saying if I give you this function is the derivative is the fifth derivative equal to 0? That's the question. Okay? They don't expect you to multiply all that out, okay? They expect you to observe something. And what you should observe is that for this bugger right here, this is equal to y, y equals x to the fourth plus blah, 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 okay? So if we follow the pattern here, the first derivative is equal to 4x to the third. The second derivative is equal to 12x squared. The third derivative is equal to 24x 
the fourth derivative is equal to 24, and therefore the fifth derivative is 0. So, true. Okay. So what do we notice about the pattern? Well, that's what question 132 is all about. Let's suppose f of x is some nth degree function, okay? meaning it's uh, x to the nth. Okay. If that's the case, this says if I do the n plus 1th derivative, is it equal to 0? And so you say, well, how did this work over here? This was 4th. This would mean n is equal to 4. And I was asking for the fifth derivative, which was the n plus 1. So no matter what, this is true. It could be any kind of polynomial. And the if you take one more derivative than it has a degree, then it's going to be 0 all the time. Now, that's not true for the sine or the cosine. Remember that? We did the one where we took the first, the second, the third, the fourth, and it just it, all of a sudden it just starts, starts recycling itself over again. Okay? Um, in mathematics, it's modular. It actually has to do with the mod function from computer science. Okay? Because it repeats itself, and so it doesn't matter if you take the fourth or the eighth or the twelfth or the sixteenth derivative, they're always the same. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, that's because I forgot them. 73, wait, 80, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I read that as uh, 75, which was similar to 73. Yeah, 83, let's do 83. That's the one at the area, right? So um, I was meaning to do that one. 83 said, uh, oh, it was a word problem. Scary. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately for you, life was going to be all about word problems. So, <laughs> the length of the rectangle is given by this, so L is equal to 2t plus 1. And the width was equal to the square root of t. Or they call it the height, uh, either one. Okay. And then they said this. They said, uh, well, find the rate of change of the area with respect to t. Okay. This, is, this is important. Find the rate of change. Of the area, you can tell it's important because I'm writing it down. The area with respect to with to t. Okay. Now it's a rectangle, so um, area with a length and a height is equal to l times h. So if area is equal to L times H, the question is, and L and H are both functions of T, then I can really say that A of T is equal to 2T plus 1 times the square root of T. Notice this, this right here. This is big. The area function is a function of T where all I did was plug in the L and the H, and they both contain T's. So it's, an air, it's a function with respect to T. This said, find the rate of change of the area with respect to T. Here's how you interpret that. 
That means I'm out to find dA dt, or in other words, the derivative of the A function. This is the derivative of the area with respect to t, which means the slope of the line tangent to the area, which also means the rate of change of the area. Okay. So all you have to do is find the derivative of that thing. So I don't know, I'd probably, I probably wouldn't use product rule. I'd probably just distribute that first. So this is, this is really t to the 1 half. I'm going to be thinking that as I go here. So I'm going to distribute this. So 2t to the 1 plus 1 half is the 3 halves plus t to the 1 half. This is the same function as the one that's in the parentheses. All I did was distribute the t to the 1 half. So to answer the question, what's the derivative of a with respect to t? It's 2 times 3 halves times t to the 1 half plus 1 half t to the negative 1 half. And then cleaned up 3 square root of t plus 1 over 2 square root of t. And that's a prime or d a d t. Thanks for reminding me again. It's twice today. Okay, any questions? Okay. They put it with a uh, common denominator. Is that Slater? Oh, okay. All right. Um, okay. Let's move on to, uh, we're going to recap the chain rule. Well, if I were you, I'd avoid a hot tub. <laughs> Go tell her. Today, and he goes, Well, if I were you, I'd avoid a hot tub. Okay. Okay, I'm going to show you two different techniques to do the same problem. And uh, here is the original function. f of x is equal to, let's do the sine of x squared plus 4. So technique number one is the one that I showed. We just kind of just kind of did it by thinking about the whole problem. Technique two is where I'm going to show you the breakdown on to why the chain rule actually works. So we said this that the chain rule works with composites. Okay, composite functions are functions where there's one thing, one function inside of another function. Okay, that's the purpose of the chain rule. It's, it works with those. So the problem that exists is we have a derivative for the sine of x. We just don't have the derivative of the sine of something other than just x. Okay, it's not one of our standard rules. Okay, so what we have. What we have to do here is we say, all right, we find the derivative of a sine, and that is the cosine. 
And so it's the cosine of the x squared plus 4. But the problem is we can't stop there. We then have to multiply by the derivative of what was inside. And so the derivative of x squared plus 4 is 2x. So the final retail answer is this. Okay. Now the problem with it, just learning it like that, is it's total, totally based on trust. It's me saying to you, yeah, this is how you do it. Uh-huh. Okay? And I could be totally lying to you. But you would learn a process. Okay? Whether or not we can truly validate it is is there's nothing that we can do to validate here. What I'm going to do right now is show you how to actually prove this. So I'm going to treat this as the following. I'm going to say that y is equal to um, u, pardon me, the sine of u. Okay. So I, we're eyeballing this, and I see y is equal to the sine of u. Okay. However, u is equal to x squared plus 4. Now, you guys are in upper level mathematics, so you should be able to do that kind of substitution in your head and see that this, if I say this, it's the same thing as saying that, okay, except for the f of x equals y. Okay. Now, watch this. I'm going to take this puppy, and I'm going to find its derivative, and then I'm going to take this puppy, and I'm going to find the derivative of it. Okay. Now notice, this is a y function and it has u's in it. Okay, it has u's in it. So that means my derivative is dy du. It's dy du, not dy dx, because the variable, this is like me saying find the derivative of y with respect to u. Because u, u is the variable that's inside. So the derivative of y with respect to u, well, that's just the derivative of the sine of u, which is the cosine of u. Now I'm going to find the derivative of u with respect to x. Well, the derivative of u with respect to x is equal to 2x. The derivative of u with respect to x, which is 2x. Now, I'm going to do something kind of funky here. It, if this is equal to this, and this is equal to that, then I should be able to multiply these two things on the left, and they should be equal to the product of the two things on the right. Right? That's actually one of our rules of mathematics. So we can multiply equal things by equal things. So dy times du, d, the dy du. So watch, the, watch this carefully. This is, this, this is everything right here. du, dy du, this side, multiplied by this side here, du dx. So this one times this one should be equal to this one times this one. Okay, so let's do that. Cosine of u times 2x. So watch my uh, hands here. This one times this one is equal to this one times this one. Nothing wrong with that, mathematically. But watch what happens. This is where the fun is. dy du times du d, dx. Canceling. Boom, boom. You see it? So what are we left with? We're left with dy dx. And it's the cosine of u times 2x. 
Well, I know that u is equal to x squared plus 4, so it's the cosine of x squared plus 4 multiplied by 2x, which these are the same, and we're really happy with that. Make sense? This is, this is the ultimate proof of what the chain rule, how the, that the chain rule actually works. So you're not just trusting me, because that's a bad thing to do. Okay? Blind, blindly trusting somebody is usually bad. Oh, oh come on. All right. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to practice this for a couple of problems. And then after you know how to do both of them, then from now on you can do it whichever way that, you, that makes sense to you. They're both, you get the same answer, but one is more formal. I'd say the second one is more formal than the other one. Okay, so here we go. f of x <coughs> is equal to, oh, let's do a really fun one. Let's do the tangent cube, no, 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 oh. to the seventh oh. of, oh, this will be good enough, uh, x cubed minus x. Okay? Now remember, our goal is we're going to be able to find the derivative of anything. Any function that you can imagine. So let's do this one together, and then I'll, I'll throw you one that you have to do on your own. All right. This problem, actually, all by itself, should be rewritten so that you can see what we're doing here. The original function. Does everybody agree that this is really the tangent of x cubed minus x to the seventh power, like this? Okay. So uh, I'm going to do the mechanical technique, and then from there you can see how the rest of it comes out. So what I'm going to say is, uh, so to, yeah, that would be good. Nailed it. <laughs> so, so the solution, this is how I would do it. This is the technical way. Y is equal to U to the seventh. Okay. I spy something to the seventh power as my outermost function. But then, u is equal to what? <coughs> Tangent, I like w. <laughs> Where w is equal to <laughs> x cubed minus x. Uh-oh, that meant there were three of these, right? There was one inside of another, inside of another. Okay? Chain rule. Now, if you do it the mechanical way, it just all works out. Okay? So let's just do it. So here we go. Over on this one, I'm going to find dy du. Okay, what's dy to u? 7u to the 6th. Piece of cake. What's the next one? du, dw. <coughs> Secant squared of what? w. dw. 
dx. 3x squared minus 1. Make sense? OK, so watch this. This is really fun. I'm going to multiply the left sides, and we'll keep our fingers crossed that this is going to work out. OK, so dy du times du dw times dw dx. Am I going to get to put a smiley face on it? Yes. Yes. Ding, 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 ding. OK? So that means whatever I get on the right side is the derivative of this function. OK? All right, so this is what? 7 u to the 6th multiplied by secant squared w multiplied by 3x squared minus 1. Watch your parentheses. And then you just plug everything in, making sure that your final answer only has x's in it. OK, since I found dy dx, I only have there. So notice this. This is going to be 7 times the t u, the tangent of x cubed minus x to the 6th. times the secant squared of x cubed minus x times 3x squared minus 1. Do you see it? Easy. This is easy. Golden rule of problem solving. Take a, take a big, nasty problem and turn it into smaller, nasty problems. And then knock them off one at a time. OK, you do this one. f of x is equal to the cosine to the fourth of x to the sixth. Find me the derivative of that. Hate these bells. All right, we'll check that first thing tomorrow. Start doing your homework on this thing, and we're still going to do practice problems tomorrow. Tomorrow is a still practice problem day on chain roll.